Hi, I'm Robert Ellenwood. Welcome to another Granite Rock Theater. Concrete slabs make a wonderful driveway or parking area. Here we are today in La Selva Beach where a homeowner has installed a concrete slab for their travel trailer. Let's show you how that all began. Let's take a look at some of the issues we have to deal with in this project. The trailer is basically going to be backing up in this location here and we're going to place the trailer on the side of the house. So obviously we've got the tree we've got to deal with. We have the fence that we have to deal with and there might be some other unknowns that we're not sure about right now. So let's take a look at some of those items behind the fence and see what we have to address back there. Obviously we need to remove all the debris here and check for any plumbing or electrical or any other items that might be buried underground. That way we can get our first test on what we need to do. Let's start removing some of this debris so we can get a better eye on what's next. So that gets us to our base. This is where we want to start with before we put our sub-base in. And you can see we've established some lines here. The top blue line is the top of slab. The second blue line, which is four inches below, is the top of our sub-base. We're going to set some screed stakes up so that we can get our sub-base to the right height. And to do that, we'll run string lines and stakes. Let's go ahead and do that. Use a 2 by 4 about half the distance of your perimeter. Next, we'll go ahead and find a level mark. And from that level mark, we want to drop it down about a half an inch. We want the water to slope away from the house. So by establishing our base sets, we'll be able to do that. We've got our screeds up now with our screed board and we're ready to start setting our base. Three quarter inch class two base rock is a crushed, well graded blend of aggregates. It is designed to compact tightly with proper equipment and provide an excellent base for concrete. Use a vibrating plate and or a hand tamp to compact each layer. Make sure you compact layers no deeper than two inches at a time until you achieve your desired height. Well, now we've completed our forming. We've added our form board, our upright stakes to hold the form in place, our kicker stakes to keep it from spreading out, and we've streamlined it, and we've also sloped it away from the house so that we get runoff. We've readjusted our screed hooks so that now we're in place. The next thing we're gonna do is add our rebar. So let's do that. Granite Rock carries both rebar and wire mesh for concrete reinforcement. It is best to use rebar whenever possible for ensuring the greatest possible strength. As you can see, our rebar is in place. We put it in a grid pattern with spacing approximately two feet apart. We also use concrete dobies with wire attached to raise it approximately two inches off the ground. We added an expansion joint against our exterior concrete, and this will allow for expansion and contraction of the concrete as it dries. Another area of concern was any pipe that comes out of the ground, we wrapped it in foam, so this allows for expansion and contraction. We're ready to pour now, so let's see what the truck's doing. So now we need to call the concrete dispatcher to order our concrete. Hi, Steve. Yes, this is Robert Ellenwood. Hi. Yeah, this is in regards to that project we talked about last week. Yep, we're, we're ready to roll. Nine yards. Five and a half sack, that's correct. Great. Thank you very much. We'll see you then. They're on their way. One last thing before we pour, we want to remove any obstructions for our screed boards. And one of those obstructions is our kickers here that we used. And we're going to go ahead and cut those with our sawzall and then we're ready to pour. Prior to the truck arriving, make sure you prepare the site. Go ahead and mask off any areas you don't want splatters on. Wet down the area to make sure it's damp and make sure your tools are all ready to go. It wouldn't hurt to go to the website and check out some of the hand signals for the backing up of the truck. When your truck arrives, make sure you have enough people on site to assist you with your project. This particular project, we are tailgating the load. This is a process in which the load is delivered down the truck chute. For less accessible projects, you may need to pump the concrete into location. Contact your local Granite Rock dispatcher to assist you with this program. Next, grab your screed board to help level the concrete into place. You can do this by moving your screed board in a rocking motion or a zigzag motion. This will help level the concrete into place. Continue this process until you reach the end of the form boards. Allow the concrete to set until the surface looks shiny. 
Next, push and pull the bull float across the surface, lifting after each stroke. This will bring the cream up. Then cut the control joints. You can use a trowel or a grooving tool for this job. Next, use a mag float. This will set the top. Now you can edge the concrete with an edging tool. This provides a round, smooth edge to keep the slab from tipping. Before the slab sets off, finish with a steel trowel. This will seal the top. And finally, you can add texture by pushing and pulling a stiff bristle broom across the surface until achieving satisfied results. It's best to keep heavy loads off the slab for at least 28 days. And that's it. That's the completion of your brand new slab. Well, that wraps up another edition of Granite Rock Theater. Thanks for stopping by and check back often as we provide you with more how-to Granite Rock Theater.